This week, I started to build out in the upstairs bedroom to prepare for insulation. I'll be putting in a 20 foot LVL beam, as well as frame the closets for pocket doors, add some blocking for the finishes, and then we'll get into some electrical too. I'll also go into why I think closed cell foam insulation is best for this type of renovation. The first thing I need to get done is preparing the gable end walls for the beams. So adding blocking and hangers so that the beam can be placed spanning the whole room. And as you can see, this gable wall here has all kinds of funky framing. Uh, most of it was balloon frame, I believe, but some of it seems to not make any sense to me, um, like the one I'm gonna add on to above the window. So the first thing I need to do for that is to add a double two by six header to the window, which surprisingly it didn't have. I'm keeping all this framing off of the sheathing on the back of the wall so that I can um, have a little bit of space for insulation to go in. Once the 2x12 blocks are in and secure, I can start adding the hangers. And I'm only attaching one side of the hanger and leaving the other side open so that I can more easily side the beam in. And just as a quick note, I am centering the hangers on the center of the openings, so for the window and the door. So now I can put the LVL beam in. This is a two by 12 LVL, about 20 feet long, and it should weigh about 120 pounds. So needless to say, this was not easy to do by myself. on the closets. I'm resnapping my center of room line so that I can measure off of for the layout for the closets. Once the bottom and top plates are in, I can start framing the walls. I'm just doing 16 on center and cutting a 45 degree angle on the tops because the roof is a 12-12 pitch. You might notice that the corner stud is at a different orientation than the rest of the wall framing. Uh, that's to accept the header for the pocket door that I'm working on right now. The corner stud and the stud that is attached to the wall are both acting as king studs. And then you'll see later on, I add jack studs to the inside of the opening to get my rough open. Thank you. 
This is fairly straightforward electrical. Uh, the first step is always to install the boxes. I'm using adjustable boxes because I'm not entirely sure how much I'm gonna to need to fur the walls out. Um, so that gives me the ability to come in and out um, as I need. wires uh, prior to closed cell insulation is that you want to nail your wire to your sheathing as tightly as possible. You do not want the wire to be the, uh, have the ability to move around while they're spraying. On the gable end, I'm adding two boxes to each side of the window. This will be symmetrical on the king size bed that we'll put in this room. And so these boxes act as a light switch and a place for a sconce to be on. And then I just needed to add a little bit more framing to the room before insulation. These boards are mostly for nailing purposes later on. So now we can talk about the insulation. We're doing closed cell foam insulation because I believe it is the best uh, material and most cost effective to insulate this space and for most renovation projects. So we're doing five inches in the roof, which gives us R38, and three and a half inches in the wall, which gives us R26. Um, as you'll see, they, they have a tendency to overfill the cavities. So really we're getting closer to four inches in the walls and five and a half to six inches in the roof, which further increases the R value. All this work costs us $2,824. You might be wondering uh, why I decided to spend this much money on the insulation when I could have gone with 
Rockwool, say, and I did the calculation, and Rockwool would have cost between sixteen and eighteen hundred dollars to do the entire room. But the calculation is, I think, incorrect. I think the calculation to compare the cost of the two misses the point. The twenty-eight hundred dollars we're paying for the closed cell insulation includes the cost of labor, which in the, in this case I think is absolutely worth it. Uh, the other thing that it doesn't include say for rock wool, is the moisture barrier that closed cell adds, as well as all the air sealing qualities that closed cell does. So as you spray it, the foam gets into all the nooks and crannies and seals everything. Um, oftentimes, if your house isn't super tight, you actually can see the foam seeping through your siding, uh, which is an indicator that it, it really seals all the holes. Um, the other thing that Rockwell can't provide is the is to match the R value of closed cell. So, you know, you're still comparing apples and oranges. And now we're getting into the, the real strength of um, closed cell, in my opinion, in this, especially in this case, uh, when we're talking about the structural qualities of the foam. So this building was built in 1880, which is, you know, roughly 150 years ago. And so some of these nails, you know, stands to reason have either rusted out or are not holding the entire building as tight as it, you know, once did. Um, so spraying all this with the foam allows everything to get tied back together. Um, you know, you can imagine this as a, as a, you know, you're basically pouring foam the way you would concrete. So all these walls are now tied together like a big sheathing, um, module. The part that really seals the deal for me is that I hate installing insulation. And so next week, we'll start working on the framing for the barrel vault. Thanks for watching. Now get back to work.